Hello and welcome to today's video and this one is a bit of an unusual one because um, the lady that delivers the Hermes parcels or used to deliver the Hermes parcels knows I'm into old video equipment and she had this unit lying around which um, her family have owned since 2004 so this is a JVC DRMV1 Cosmetically, it's in really good condition. Even comes of its original box, which I've got downstairs. And it's back in that sort of early 2000s era where JVC was using the inventor of the VHS marketing strap line. And it seems to be a fully featured unit. So it does, I believe, DVD, VHS DVD dubbing, as long as it's not macrovision protected. We have many inputs, which is quite handy. So S-Video in, uh, we've also got these phono inputs as well. There's twin scarts on the back as well as component outs. Uh, what else have we got? We have this flap at the front, which has obviously got some hand controls for DVD. That's useful, there's a DV in, which is quite useful for uh, digital camcorders of the era. But when we power up, allow me to show you what happens when we're powering up. So you get some random flashing of LEDs on the front, accompanied with a ticking noise from the power supply. So I think the first thing that we need to do is to get this stripped apart and take a look see what's going on in that power supply. I don't want to leave it doing that for too long in case it um, spews a capacitor everywhere. So let me just unplug it. So from here on in, I think we're going to be dismantling it, getting a look at that power supply in there, seeing if there's anything we can do. So we got into the unit and I think the problem is quite obvious. This capacitor has swollen quite significantly it seems to be almost like a scorch mark on top of it this one's looking quite podgy as well the others seem to be okay so these ones seem to be okay but these two uh, do not seem to be happy at all so let me see if I can see where the noise is coming from when you power it up or attempt to Yeah, there is like a tick in somewhere, but it's probably something that's trying to power up and instantly shutting down again. I don't want to keep that going for too long, as I say, because the last thing you want is something erupting somewhere in a cloud of smoke. So certainly the first best thing to do in this instance is to replace both of those before we start going any further. Now, getting into this power supply, appears to be on its in a separate board which is quite useful. We have this connector for mains coming in. So this capacitor and certainly this region of the power supply is looks like the hot side. You have the bridge rectifier here. I wouldn't be surprised if that is possibly toasted as well so I may have to get one of those. Uh, we have a, not sure what that is, that's some kind of power output transistor. Looking a little scorchy under there, so I'm not sure if this could be in need of replacement. Uh, then we have a couple of transformers, which I'm assuming are going to be stepped down. And there's a line here on the actual board, which is probably coming into the output stage of the power supply and it's these capacitors in the output stage which appear to have given up the ghost very much in a similar way to the sony f1 power supply um which was looking at this it's it's a similar design obviously the components are in different place but the concept is very similar this goes to a standard iec connector on the back of the dvd drive the dvd drive is a standard IDE drive um, 
and it's no different to the ones that you had in PCs and other machines of the era. In fact, it's probably very similar to the one that sat inside this RISC PC. What else have we got in here? Anything else unusual or really out of the ordinary? Not really. Standard uh, VHS deck of the era. Lots of plastic everywhere, very cheap metals, but uh, it's effective enough, it does the job. Uh, look at this, it is a four head unit, it's probably actually near a six heads, because you've obviously got the hi-fi audio heads, and you may have a long play and standard play head on the same chip. Nothing really much to write home about in here, there's nothing particularly very interesting there at all, if I'm going to be honest. It is what it is, it's just functional. Now, these always confuse me. I'm not sure if they uh, come off down here, because that seems pretty solidly on there. So I need to investigate these, because I'll be honest, I don't know how these come off, or how these go in. So, because we need to be able to get those out of the way to be able to remove this board for a bit of in additional investigation. So this is just basically a little ribbon data cable from the DVD player, recorder. That's obviously the power supply for the DVD. You've got a cooling fan at the back here, and that is just coupled on with that little connector there. Always worth checking these fans, as they do seize. This one seems to be absolutely fine, so there's no problems with that. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time seeing how I can get these connectors removed and I'll report back when I have managed to find a way to do it. So bear with me and I'll be back shortly. So because I didn't actually know how these little connectors pop out, I dismantled a lot more of the unit. So popped the front off and removed the DVD drive which is held in with one two, three, and four screws. So you need to move this little ribbon cable out of the way, disconnect the little IDE connector from the, uh, the drive itself, and then you can, after getting this front out of the way, you can remove the drive itself. Be careful not to stretch it too far because there's a lot of these flimsy ribbon cables holding everything together. So you just need to be careful of that. However, these are a lot easier to take out than I first thought, because they're pressed into here. You just flick a screwdriver under them and pop, out they come. I've less, left this one down here in, so if I just get this flat-bladed screwdriver under this little edge here and go... hang on... bang, out it comes. You need to be careful though, because these little wires, like everything in these modern machines, it's really fragile and they will bend so much as you look at them. Anyway, next stage, four screws, I think, yep. Get this board out, see if we can do anything with it. Right, so here's the board and it looks like we can get to the components that we want to get to. Now there is um, around on this primary side a pretty beefy 400 volt, uh, 400 volt capacitor and speaking from experience as in just now I didn't quite realize that it would still be holding charge, which is a really stupid mistake of mine because of course it's going to be holding charge. And it kind of discharged through my hand, which was quite painful. It was enough to uh, allow me to throw the board out of the way. Thankfully, it hasn't damaged the board and uh, it doesn't appear to have damaged me. But yeah, just be careful discharge it before you start playing around because you know it will bite and it will bite hard so we seem to be okay at the moment uh, the bitiness has hopefully gone but we will uh, need to exercise a bit of care 
when removing these capacitors. Now, the capacitors that we want to go for are these two here, which I'm just focusing in on there. And they're quite a weird set of values. We've got 6.3 volts, 1500 microfarads, and the other one is... I want to say 10 volts and 1200 microfarads so very strange values I don't think I've got anything of that sort of size in my collection I will take a look but I'm pretty certain that I don't so let's also take a look at this big 400 volt 100 microfarad affair may as well grab one of those and this little bridge rectifier is a, is that a DC3329 GBJ4J so we will grab one of those that I think is just a main suppressor and yeah this little X2 so that's just a main suppressor looks okay to be honest we don't need to replace that but I think we'll go for this big cap May as well grab the bridge and those two, actually. That bridge rectifier, which is, uh, sorry, these four pins here. So one, two, three, four. Um, probably best to test it off circuit, but let's see if we can get any values and resistance across those. So there we go. That's the two capacitors removed from the circuit. And I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can focus in on it. You can see it is quite bulgy at the top. Uh, this one is a 10 volt, 1200 microfarad. This one is a 6.3 volt, 1500 microfarad. So I don't have anything that will fit. The closest I've got is a 3300 microfarad at 33 volts but it's actually physically too big just take a look physically too big to fit onto the circuit board so I probably need to get something of a similar value to these two next ones that I have which might fit but are still actually a bit big we have a thousand microfarads at I think this one's 50 volts but again, won't physically fit onto the board. So I think I need to get some of those in. Um, I've, I measured voltage across that. I've actually had to discharge it because there was still that was still holding around 400 volts or so. So there was quite a bit of um, quite a bit of charge in that one. I'm actually tempted to uh, replace that one as well whilst I'm in there. It wouldn't do any harm. Uh, the other ones look okay, it might be worth taking them out to test, but certainly the ones which looked visibly um, problematic have now been removed. So let's get the tester onto the ones that we've removed, and let's have a look and see what sort of values they're putting out. So here's our tester. Uh, let's see... Uh, will it work if I do it on these two, or am I going to have to use the probes? Okay. So it reckons it's a damaged part. Might be because we're not using the right probe. I think it's this one you've got to use, as that's got the capacitor symbol on it. So let's try that again. So it reckons that's a damaged part. Uh, I will try it with the probes in a second as well and see what they flag up. All right, that's V loss 17%, 11.23 nanofarads. 
Yeah. Okay then. I think that's toast as well. Right, I'm going to try it with the probes and see if I get the same results. Yeah, I think it's right, although this is a lesson to avoid cheapo capacitors. It has a 1000 microfarad and it's showing up on there as 895.95 microfarads. However, um, the ESR was low. Anyway, let's try these broken ones. Yeah, I think that is toast. 9,403 picofarads, V loss of 31%. So that's had it. And excuse the ropey camera work whilst I pop this one in place and do a test. Yeah, this is the one that was saying damaged part. So that's pretty conclusive. Those two capacitors are past their best. So what I'm going to do now is basically put everything back together. So just put this board back in place, leave the bits unconnected, but just put everything back in, screw it back together as it was effectively. And next time I'm going to replace those two capacitors and see if they do any good for us. Anyway, a little bit of a change from the planned video, to be honest with you. Um, the planned video was to show that the Garrod, which I was restoring uh, recently, is now working and connected up to my little hi-fi stack. So there's a couple of Wharfdale laser range 30s, I think they are, 40s, I can't remember, uh, down the bottom there. We have a couple of tape decks which are just for show at the moment, because I've got um, an Iwa AD6500 that I want to restore. These two I need to do something with to make sure that they work. Not sure what I'm going to do about this Technics one. I might keep it, I might uh, let it go. The mission is PCM7000, and I'll be honest with you, it's one of my favourite um, CD players of all time. Fantastic deck, and works well. This is a Sony amplifier, not sure of the model number, used to have a little Sony badge on it but that's fallen off at some point. This is the one that had the damaged wooden case which I repaired and the repair seems to be holding up. And obviously this is our Garrod turntable. As you can see I've stuck the Formica trims back down using some glue, given the lid a bit of a polish and repaired the bit of the damage there at the back. And it's looking pretty good, to be honest, not bad at all. I think I need to touch up some of the solder joints on the point where the tone arm meets the um, phono connectors, because there is a bit of noise when you're playing, so a bit of feedback. Uh, so I want to touch those up, and that should solve that particular issue. But I've got to admit, it's, it's a lovely looking deck. Um, and I recently discovered in my mum's loft, I've got the 100 SV model, so I'm going to be bringing that down and giving that uh, a bit of a similar restoration treatment. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, which was originally about this modern thing, don't forget to hit the like button, Go down, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.